12 days to the fourth dimension the Scott P with a little help from my friends day 5 dash a chapter 17 day 5 dash a set aside prayer dear God please help me to set aside everything I think I know about myself your other kids and you so I may have an open mind and a new experience Please help me see the truth about myself, your other kids, and you. Step 5 Spiritual Principle Integrity Soundness of Moral Character Promise number 5 No matter how far down the scale we have gone, we will see how our experience can benefit others. Daily 4th Dimension Preparation Checklist At the end of the day, check off what you did. 1. Do not drink. 2. Pray and meditate. Three, talk to your sponsor. Four, go to a meeting. Five, do service work. Six, read some of the big book. Day 5-A story. Many years ago, at the gateway to heaven, there was a unique inquiry made by a man who had only just arrived there. He had lived a good life and therefore pleased to find himself afront the pearly gates ready to ascend into the light and love of the afterlife. Yet, there was a thought he was unable to get rid of. The gatekeeper, being of course quite observant, noticed his trepidation and asked, What's the issue? You seem troubled. Unfinished business? No, the newly deceased replied, Everything's tied up just fine down there. It's just that I find myself wondering what hell is like. I never really believed in heaven or hell when I was alive. So I find it somewhat troubling that these places actually exist. While I am exceptionally grateful to be here, the thought of anyone suffering at all, let alone for eternity, makes my stomach twist. Is God really so vengeful? You may be surprised, the gatekeeper smiled. As with all great truths, it's not as simple as you may suppose, yet also far simpler. Let me show you. With the wave of his arm, they found themselves at the gateway to hell. To the deceased's surprise, it was nearly identical to the entrance to heaven. He could suddenly smell an array of delicious foods and hear the din of cutlery. The gatekeeper led him through, the doors opening onto a scene of opulent beauty. It was an enormous banquet hall, so wide and so long that there were no walls to be seen. Only immense pillars with intricate carvings descending into the distance and climbing to an unseen ceiling covered by celestial clouds. Chandeliers hung all over the ancient tables, casting a warm glow on the diners, who were far too numerous to count. The most beautiful ethereal music wafted in from all corners and the smell of food was so mouth-watering he could nearly taste it. This is hell? the man gasped. Yes, quite, the gatekeeper replied, pausing for a moment and nodding to himself. It's not what it seems. Take a closer look. The man did so, examining the tables with a little more scrutiny. Suddenly, he noticed something disturbing. The cutlery was not separate from the guests, but actually extensions of them. Each diner had either a fork spoon or knife extending gaudily from their arms. The utensils so long it was impossible for them to get food into their mouths. With dawning horror, he began to realize the scope of the situation. They were starving, in agony, surrounded by a feast of kings and unable to get any of it into their mouths, only growing hungrier by the day, yet continuing to toil helplessly. He could hear their moans and cries now, feel the desperation and hopelessness of the situation as it continued on into infinity. He shivered. Ugh, I've seen enough. Please take me away from here. In a blink, they were back at the gates of heaven. Okay, he said. I'm ready. Can we please go in? He followed the gatekeeper across the threshold and into heaven. To his astonishment, it was the exact same scene. The giant banquet hall, the music, the food, and worst of all, the cutlery as appendages. He looked down. 
His arms had become a grotesquely long fork and knife, each incapable of reaching his mouth. He was filled with horror and was about to cry out when suddenly he felt the gatekeeper's hand on his shoulder, gently squeezing. Look closer, came the whisper. Looking up, he suddenly noticed that the mood of the diners was in complete contrast to those in hell. There was nearly a palpable atmosphere of love, sharing, camaraderie, and delight that permeated the entire hall. Noticing this, he could suddenly feel it was beginning to well up in himself as well. Tears filled in his eyes. Everyone, everywhere, was dining merrily, their faces bright and rosy, creased with laughter and warm with joy. Their bellies were plump and their eyes shone with light. They were partaking in every aspect of the feast. How they were feeding each other. Last but not least, the way to end the day. As one begins to enter the fourth dimension, we, after seeking, come to understand we are vibrational beings. The energy we vibrate is of the utmost importance as we prepare to have this change come upon us. Gratitude is the energy we must generate all throughout our being. Keep it simple. To help you get started feeling this gratitude before resting peacefully, answer these three simple questions. Three questions. The way to end your day. Today did I live. Today did I love. Today did I matter. Today, treat every person you spend time with like it is the last time you will ever see them. Now get some rest. Day six, getting ready to come at you.